Let's take these two dishes and steal wool boy. The dishes are for steel wool boy, one for each foot. Put him on the scale and notice his initial mass is about 15.76 grams. Powered by a nine volt battery, we can do science. Normally, when you burn something like a candle, the observed mass decreases as the carbon and hydrogen in the candle react with oxygen in the air and get converted into carbon dioxide and water. Check it out, nothing left but the clay holding the candle. Steel Wool Boy is a totally different story. Watch the mass. This is visually one of my favorite experiments. At the beginning, the mass decreases, and I don't know why. If you know, drop me a quick note in the comments. Notice the mass starts to go up and up and up, even though Steel Wool Boy is burning. This little misadventure will literally leave Steel Wool Boy a bigger man when he's done. So trippy. I had no idea this would happen. So what does happen? Oxygen. It's sort of rusting really fast. For more, check out the full experiment in the comments. If you fill a balloon with room temp water and put it in a beaker of room temp water, what will happen if you pop it? Will the dye blast out like the air in this balloon? Will it hold its shape for a moment like this water-filled balloon? Will it plop like this underwater air-filled balloon? Will balloons filled with cold water or balloons filled with hot water be any different? Let's see. First, fill the balloon with green room temp water. I'll use this 100 milliliter syringe to fill the balloons. I'll put the balloon on this shish kebab rod to hold it in the middle of the jar. Here it goes. Weird. I thought the dye would hold its shape, then fill the jar evenly. What if we fill the balloon with zero degrees Celsius water? Let's try. Cold water that is not frozen is more dense and generally sinks. What about this 64 degrees Celsius hot water? The less dense hot water floats toward the top. What'd you notice? I want to combine this and this to get this. This egg is raw. Get something pokey, you can poke holes in either end of the egg. Blow on one side of the egg and the high pressure shoots the yolk out. That was functional, but we can do better. Get some water, boil it, prep the egg, get a little clay for a seal, and set it on the beaker. What do you think will happen? I've never tried this. I'm hoping the hot steam will condense and the pressure will drop. <laughs> Get some vinegar, put it in one beaker, tap water in the other. Get red dye, and add equal amounts to both. Drop in the eggs. Which one will color the eggs better? I let them sit about three minutes. When we take them out, the water shell looks like this. The acidic shell looks like this. Which one do you like best? Take a big jar, fill with water, add tons of salt, then take solution from the bottom. Add to a balloon. The balloon sinks right to the bottom. Then it starts to rise. Another balloon's filled with water from the bottom and it sinks. But when we stir, it floats too. Get a new jar and green food coloring. Take some solution near the orange balloon and put it in the jar. Add the food coloring and slowly pump it back in. It stays trapped for some reason in this band. Take solution from the band, add it to a balloon, and we see the balloon floats in the green band. Take solution from the top, add red dye, slowly pour back in, and we see a visually satisfying red band. Take solution from the bottom, add to a balloon, and the balloon sinks right to the bottom. Take solution from the bottom, mix with blue dye, add it to the top, and it sinks to the green band level. It's weird, but if we put the blue dye all the way at the bottom, it'll stay below all the layers. Can you help me figure out why any of this happens? This blue candle will blow your mind. Bottom of the plate that's filled with water. Dye for flare. Match, strike, light. Oxygen and wax react. What comes out? Three containers, unique as snowflakes. Oil glass today. Full video linked in the comments. What will happen to the water, flame, and air if I cover it? The candle's over a thousand degrees Celsius, so it heats and rapidly expands the air, hence the bubbles. But why then does the water start rising? Hot CO2 and H2O come out of the flame. The steam condenses on the cool walls, lowering the pressure. Flame out. And the water keeps rising. Why, why, why? Let me know what you think. For a while, I've been wanting to try putting a giant marshmallow in the microwave. I gave this one some googly eyes for size reference and because I really like googly eyes. This one I put in for about 40 seconds. And it really increased in size. They're so squishy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Blah, 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 blah. I put it back in, and we can see how the air trapped inside the sugar really makes the marshmallow expand. 
I cooked it a little long, and he sort of looked like a Tim oh Burton character from Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, dude. <laughs> a little overcooked. Get a AA battery for electrons. Won't stand? But don't flip it. Add magnets. Neodymium for magnetic field. Washer for stability. Center it. Googly eyes. Oops. There it is. Slide them back. Grab some magnetic wire to carry the current. A foot or so is good. Cut. Try different amounts of coils. Get some matches or a lighter. Light. Burn off the enamel so the current flows. Steel wool. Clean the wires. Nice. Bend wire to fit the battery. Set it on. Nope. Adjust. It's going. Electrons move out of the battery, through the wire, and feel a force from the magnetic field in the process. The full video is in the comments. Come back for more. I knew you could relight one candle with smoke, but what about two? And if you can do two, what's the upper limit? Let's find out. Here's five. Got it. Here's seven. Sweet. <laughs> Here's 15. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Let's use all the candles I got. 39. What's the most candles you think we could relight with this technique? Let me know in the comments. You think it'll work? <laughs> That's so cool. With a regular balloon rubbed on the counter, you can make a static electric sandstorm. The sand jumps up like crazy. Why does this happen? When you rub the balloon on the counter, you're actually picking up electrons from the counter because of the triboelectric effect. Balloons take electrons and wood gives them. This makes the balloon negative. Then, hovering the balloon over the sand initiates static electric induction which means the negative balloon pushes the electrons in the sand down, so the positive part of the sand wants to jump up. What do you think about that? How fast are snails? Faster than you think. These little garden munching, mucus secreting invertebrates invade my lawn every morning, but I never find them in the garden. Why? Let's find out. Watch this snail break and guess how long it takes. 14 minutes and three seconds. And what about this one? 16 minutes and 28 seconds. A couple snails were up to 7 feet away. That means they can travel at about 25 feet per hour, which at 0.004 miles per hour is a little faster than the average snail, apparently. And look at this guy. When he hits the drip, it's booster rockets. Did you miss the gopher? Wonder